Okay, we're now going to go through the discussion questions out of chapter four. Uh, this is page 145. Starting with number one. It says, is it possible for an object to be in motion if no net force is acting on it? Explain. All right, no net force means forces are balanced, but remember that does not mean the object has to be still. Uh, so certainly it could be in motion, it just would not be accelerating. You could say that elevator example where the elevator is in the middle uh, of its trip, it's moving at a nice steady pace, tension pulling up, weight pulling down, no net force, but it is still moving. All right, number two, if an object is at rest, can we conclude that no external forces are acting on it? Uh, certainly not. There could, be, there could be a thousand forces acting on that object. Uh, they just all would have to balance out. So if it's at rest, you know, it's definitely a case where forces are balanced. It doesn't mean it's a case where there's no forces. They just have to all be balanced. Number three, an object thrown into the air stops at the highest point in its path. Is it at equilibrium at this point? Explain. Okay, so it's sort of projectile at the peak of its path. Yes, it stops for an instant, but that does not mean um, that it is in equilibrium at that spot. It stops for an instant, it's about to reverse direction. Um, it was accelerating this whole time, uh, and that was of course based on gravity. So a free body diagram, you know, anywhere, on that projectile is going to show weight pulling it down. Weight is constantly pulling it down until that force wins out and it actually does go down. Um, but it is not equilibrium at the peak. There is an unbalanced force there and that's just the weight of the object. All right, number four. What physical quantity is a measure of the amount of, an, of inertia an object can have? Uh, inertia is just based off of mass. Um, the more mass the object has, the more resistance to change in motion it has. That's what inertia means. Uh, number five, a beach ball is left in the bed of a pickup truck. Describe what happens to the ball when the truck accelerates forward. to the right, the truck's going to the right, your beach ball is here, what happens to the beach ball when the truck accelerates forward? Well really, nothing. The beach ball has its own inertia, it's going to keep doing what it was already doing, which was staying still. It will appear, you know, as though the truck, well, it will appear as though it moves backwards, but the truck really is just moving sort of out from underneath it. Um, but really what happens to the beach ball is nothing, the beach ball stays where it is. Um, Picking that light example, the beach ball means friction would be minimal. Uh, so nothing happens to the beach ball. It stays where it is, but the truck moves out from underneath it. All right, number six. A large crate is placed on the bed of a truck and is not tied down. As the truck accelerates forward, the crate slides across the bed until it hits the tailgate. Explain what causes this. All right, same example. The crate's going to hit the tailgate. Again, it's not that the crate was really moving. It's that the truck was moving out from underneath it. Now, there will be a little bit of friction here as I picked a heavier crate. So rather than the spot where the crate hits the, uh, the tailgate being right here, you know, it might slide forward a little bit with the truck before uh, the tailgate hits it. But regardless, the crate's trying, you know, has its own inertia, it's trying to stay still, the truck's moving out from underneath it. Uh, it says if the driver slams on the brakes, what could happen to the crate? Well, assuming now that everything's moving along with the truck, like the crate's hit the tailgate, everything's moving along, moving along, moving along, and then the truck stops, well, the crate has its own inertia, it was moving, it's going to continue moving, so it might you know, hit the, uh, the cab of the truck. All right, flip it 
page over 13. Number 13, the force that attracts Earth to an object is equal to and opposite the force that, force that Earth attracts on the object. Explain why Earth's acceleration is not proportional to, sorry, it's not equal to and opposite the object's acceleration. Here's the Earth, let's pick the Moon, could be a person, whatever, two objects. Uh, the Earth is being pulled to the right by the Moon, the Moon is being pulled left by the Earth. Uh, of course, the Moon is moving, it's going to be an orbit, different story, but uh, the forces between them are equal and opposite. However, they do not accelerate at each other. Uh, with an equal magnitude, equal and opposite magnitude, because they have different masses. F equals ma. Um, the force between each is the same, but the Earth's got such a huge mass, you know, that if you divide by mass, you get an itty bitty acceleration. Divide by a smaller mass, you get a slightly bigger acceleration. Uh, but equal and opposite forces for sure, uh, the accelerations would be different because the masses are clearly different. All right, 14, state Newton's second law in your own words. All right, that is Newton's second law, F equals MA. Force is proportional to mass and acceleration. Uh, you could say if mass stays constant, a bigger force would cause a bigger acceleration, uh, you know, like bunting a baseball versus swinging away. Obviously, a different force there would cause a different acceleration of that baseball. Uh, we could say if we have the same force, you know, we swing away both times, but we change the mass, perhaps a baseball and a softball. Uh, the more massive softball would have less acceleration. Um, and you know, similarly, if you want to change the acceleration. So force, mass, acceleration are all related, however you want to state that in your own words. All right, 15. Uh, an astronaut on the moon has a 110 kilogram crate and a 230 kilogram crate. How do the forces required to lift the crate straight up on the moon compare with the forces required to lift them on Earth? Assume that the astronaut lifts with constant velocity in both cases. I'm not sure why two crates were necessary for this problem. So you got your astronaut lifting your box. Two forces acting on the box, you know, the lift force from your astronaut, the weight going down. If it says they're moving at a constant velocity, these are equal, up equals down. Uh, the only difference is on Earth, the weight would be more, so the lift force would be more on Earth. Um, weight's mass times gravity. Gravity is different on the Earth than the Moon. All right, 16, draw a force diagram to identify all the action-reaction pairs that exist for a horse pulling a cart. in art, as you can tell. Uh, this is not a typical question to ask for the action-reaction pairs. Usually we just pick one object, a 
talk about all the forces acting on that one object. Uh, but for there to be action-reaction pairs, there have to be two objects involved. Um, all right, so let me just talk about the cart first. Here are the forces acting on the cart. So the pull force, weight, normal force. The reactions to these, okay, so the weight is pulling the cart down, but there is a force up, you know. On the earth, from the cart. So that's the action-reaction idea. Uh, normal force, Okay, the ground is your other object in this case. The ground is pushing up on the cart. The cart is pushing down on the ground. So your two objects would be the cart and the ground in that case. Uh, pull force, horse is pulling the cart forward. Okay, well in this case, the reaction is the cart's pulling on the horse back. So that would be really the action reaction pairs for the cart. Um, for the horse, okay, we know the horse is being pulled back by the cart. Of course, the reaction is already the uh, horse pulling on the cart forward. Uh, but there also is, you know, the horse pushing into the ground. Where the horse and the ground are my two objects I'm considering. Um, so the horse is pushing, really the horse, I should say, the horse is pushing into the ground, you know, sort of the left. The reaction to that is the ground is allowing the horse to move forward. So push you know, from ground to horse. So that's all the action-reaction pairs. When you're doing action-reaction pairs, two objects have to be involved. Could be the uh, object itself and the ground, the whole earth. Um, or the cart and the horse, but two separate objects are involved for action-reaction pairs. All right, 17. A uh, space explorer is moving through space far from any planet or star and notices a large rock taken as a specimen from an alien planet uh, floating around the cabin of the ship. Should the explorer push it gently or kick it towards the storage compartment and why? Uh, well, I think obviously you would push it gently. Um, but why just deals with its acceleration. Uh, the smaller the force you give it, the smaller the acceleration it will have. And also, of course, the bigger the force you give it, the bigger reaction force you're going to have too. So you don't want to go flying backwards too fast either. Um, so, small force, minimize the acceleration of the rock, and minimize your acceleration backwards. Alright, 18. Uh, explain why a rope climber must pull down on a rope in order to move upward. Discuss the force exerted by the climber's arms in relation to the weight of the climber during the various stages of each step of the rope.
really be a frictional force. As you uh, start to accelerate your body up, probably a very slow rate, but as you accelerate your body up, that frictional force up has to be greater than your weight down, otherwise you certainly wouldn't move up. Um, if you're moving at a steady pace, they'd be equal, and as you kind of slow down before you reach up to grab again, uh, your weight down would be bigger than the frictional force up. All right, uh, skipping to 23. Explain the relationship between mass and weight. Okay, they're not the same thing again. Weight is a force in Newtons. Uh, mass is quantity of how much matter is in something, and that's in kilograms. Uh, weight is based off of mass. You know, if you go to the moon, you have a different weight, but you do have the same mass. Weight is mass times gravity, so weight takes gravity into account. Uh, 27. A teapot is initially at rest on a horizontal tabletop. Uh, then one end of the table is lifted slightly. Does the normal force increase or decrease? Does the force of static friction increase or decrease? I really like this question. Um, how does the angle affect these forces? Without sketching it out, kind of intuitively, I think you know, you know, on a flat surface, weights down, normal forces up, those things are equal. If I were to tilt, you know, the surface, so my book is about to start sliding, um, the, the surface is not supporting like the entire weight. Weight's still straight down, uh, but the normal force is not supporting all that weight. Um, so the normal force could be less if the angles increase. So we can kind of see this with the picture too. That's my teapot. Flat surface, way down, normal up, those are the same. Incline, Weight's still down, normal's at an angle this time. Normal would have to equal weight perpendicular uh, so that the teapot's not crashing through the incline or magically flying off the incline. Uh, but if that's true, if the normal equals weight perpendicular, then weight is clearly greater than the normal force here. So by you know, increasing that angle, normal force would be less. Uh, does the force of static friction increase or decrease? Another really good question. And this is a tricky question because they just asked you, what happens to the normal force? Okay, we know the normal force is decreasing as this angle gets steeper and steeper and steeper. Um, and you can imagine, of course, when it's vertical, there's no normal force at all. The teapot would just fall straight down. Uh, but we also know that friction is based off this equation. So they've kind of misled you into saying, all right, well, normal force goes down, and goes down, friction goes down. We're going to have less and less friction. But hopefully we can sense that that's not true. You know, if I lift up this uh, desk, you know, it's more and more likely the book is about to slide. I need more and more friction to keep it from sliding. So static friction is actually increasing. And remember that this equation helps you find the maximum value of static friction. We have not yet reached that maximum value of static friction as we're just barely uh, increasing our angle. 
we know based off this picture, weight parallel has to equal static friction. So as this angle increases, the weight parallel gets bigger and bigger and bigger, static friction would get bigger and bigger and bigger, up to the point where it reaches you know, its maximum value. But that's a really tricky question because they misled you into thinking, ah, oh, normal force goes down, friction goes down. No, the maximum value it could be goes down, but the value in actuality has to be weight parallel. Okay. Uh, where are we next? 28. Uh, which is usually greater, the maximum force of static friction or the force of kinetic friction? Uh, always static friction. Uh, there's the coefficients of static friction are always greater. It's always harder to get something moving than to keep it moving. 29. Uh, I skipped 29. Okay, 31. A ball is held in a person's hand. Identify all the external forces acting on the ball and the reaction force to each. Don't have a ball handy. Um, okay, but the forces acting on the ball, okay, there's a force from uh, my hand on the ball, there's a force from the ball back on my hand. Um, there's also, of course, the force of the earth pulling down on the ball and the force of the ball pulling up on the earth. B, if the ball is dropped, what force is exerted on it while it was falling? And identify the reaction force to this. If it's dropped, the only force pulling on it is the force of gravity, you know, it's weight pulling it down. The reaction to that is that the ball is pulling the earth up. The ball is so much less massive than the earth that we would never notice, you know, the effects there. But technically the earth is accelerating up at the ball. Alright, and last one, 32. Explain why pushing downward on a book as you push it across the table increases the force of friction between the table and the book. Okay, so if it is already moving across, you know, we don't have to worry about this static friction idea. Kinetic friction is definitely mu times n. Uh, it's already moving, there's so like nothing I need to exceed here. But if you are pushing down on a book or the teapot, you're providing an extra force downwards, normal forces has to get even bigger uh, to balance that out. Because again, the book is not crashing through the table, flying off the table, so the normal up would have to equal weight down and your force down. So the more you push down, the more normal force we need back up, therefore the bigger the friction from that formula. Alright, those are the force discussion questions.